Hello, son of God and my brother. This is your awakening. It's a beautiful day in Vegas. In uh, the time dimension, in the world of illusions, in the world that is outside your mind, that is already done and never happened, in the world that you are imprisoned inside, how set to, to the ego, inside this human body prison, inside this symbol of fear, inside the limitation to communication, inside the limitation to love, inside uh, the result of a tiny mind idea of corruption, which is of course this body, uh, that uh, God answered it with the answer that is Christ, the Christ in you, in the heaven of your holy mind. And uh, here we are, son of God. Here we are, son of God, for your awakening. And uh, this video is gonna be about the love of God. So there is no love but, but God. You might, perhaps you might think that there are different kinds of love uh, possible. Uh, perhaps you think there's a kind of love for this, kind for love for that, a way of loving one, another way of still loving another. Love is one. It has no degrees, no divergences, no distinctions, no separate parts, no levels. It is, it is like itself, unchanged throughout. It never alters with a person or a circumstance. It is the heart of God and also of his son, that's true love, that's infinite, that's infinite. And um, the meaning is obscure to anyone who thinks uh, it can change. Um, he, doesn't, he does not say that uh, changing love must be impossible and thus he thinks that uh, he can love at times, hate at other times, and, uh, or um, he can show love to one, withhold it from another, and and believes that love remains the same throughout. If um, to, to believe these things is not to understand love. If love could make distinctions like this, it would have to judge the Son of God between uh, 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 the sinner and the righteous and perceive him as separate. Okay, of course love, love cannot judge. Okay, we have to realize that love cannot judge as it is one in itself it is it, it looks upon everyone as one its meaning lies in oneness and uh, it must elude the mind that thinks of it as partial or in part fragmented separated there is no love but God's 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 love doesn't have an opposite. There is, there is the law of love, and where love is upset, there is nothing. And um, love is a law without opposite. Its holiness is the power holding everything as one, forever extending, for self extending, self encompassing. The link and chains, the link between the Father and the Son which holds them both are the same. It's infinite. You, you just remove the limitations of the ego, the prison of your mind. You, you're transcending the body and you, that, that's your spirit, the reconnection, the transcendence of this world. That's you, son of God, true love. You're a thought of love. So no course that is purpose is to teach you what you are could, could fail. Um, to emphasize the meaning of love, because you are that love. There is no difference between true love and what you are. There is no difference. You are forever in effect of God, a thought of love. God is your creator, though, and you are the same. You are the same. What you are His. There is no love but His, and uh, um, what, he, what He is is everything. There is nothing outside of that oneness. This is all an illusion. It's causelessness, emptiness, no creative power. You bring it to the light and it gets distinguished, abolished. And um, we have to realize that God is unlimited and so you are unlimited as well. That is your true self. You need to bring him here so you can bring the love of God to this world that believes that love is impossible. No law, this world obeys, can help you grasp love's meaning because everything that this world believes 
was made to hide love's meaning, to make it obscure, to keep it dark and secret, because love's meaning is the end of this world. When true love, when the channel opens, when God channel opens and unites the heaven on earth, uh, true love is infinite, it's unlimited. You give forever like your creator. You give, you give and increases. That's the gifts of God. That's, that, those are the laws of God. That's true love. You have one, you give one, you have two. That's true love, forever extending. It, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. And uh, no one principle the hold up holds but violates the truth of love. It violates. So it violates the truth about what you are and you have to, to, to realize not to seek within, within, within the hold to, to find yourself, your spirit, your greatest self. The Son of God. Love is not found in darkness and in death. It's not found there. It's impossible. Yet it's perfectly apparent to eyes that see, eyes that see with the mind, the vision of the mind, and the ears that hear, the Holy Spirit, the vision of the mind. Um, we can practice a bit so you can get a glimpse of that life, that love, which is life, of course. Because if you do that, trust me, if you do that, you are jabbing so many timelines, you are moving ahead in time towards your release because love is going to heal you. All miracles are coming from this love, from true love, from the love of God. All the healing power is there. All, all the healing power you have is love. And if you become aware in the heaven of your mind and if you get in glimpsing how it feels to experience the true love without any blockages, um, it's it's a leap of faith, not, not 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 just a leap of faith. You move thousand years ahead to your release. So be still, connect with your presence, you, with your awareness. Pay all the attention to the nature, to the observer inside you, to that part that didn't change at all since the moment of your birth. Something inside you, through your uh, journeys in time didn't change at all. That's the, that's the sleeping son of God. That's the truth of who you are. Nothing else is true in there. Nothing else. This is an awakening. You're a prisoner. You're hostile to the ego inside this human prison. That is you. All the attention there. Take back the attention from this world. That's what you do. You take back the attention from your thoughts, from your emotions, from space, from time. You take it all back. And you put it in... in you look up towards your spirit into the into the now into the dynamic stillness into into the dimension of being the dimension of dynamic stillness do that be still and know i'm god call your father certain that his answer his voice will come certain that his voice will answer be still and know and God be present. Go past the good, the bad thoughts. These are not your thoughts. These are sickness. These are thoughts of death, sickness, disease, madness, insanity. Go past all these thoughts. Put the clouds in your mind. Be present. Be still. Call the voice for God. Prime Creator, the Father promised He will answer and He will answer you. He will answer you. He will leave a spark of light inside your mind. All you have to do is um, to give up a false belief of love and a, a dark illusion, a false belief of death. And um, He will sign your thoughts and help you understand the truth of love. And... Uh, as you allow his voice, he, his voice is going to teach you love's meaning in gentleness, the joy of selection, the tribute to your power, the tribute to infinity, the tribute to, to the fullness of life, to the love which you are. And um, cast aside the, the insane beliefs of this world, go past over it, go past over all of them. They are made to imprison you. They are made by prisoners, by the sleeping son of gods that are hostiles to the ego. 
get past over it. Don't look outside. Transcend every law, every law of chaos of this world. Be still. All power is inside you. The Holy Spirit is gonna show you the way. Accept your Redeemer. Be a happy learner. Heart call. Call Him. Call for salvation. That's the only call you have to make down here. Because this is an empty nothingness. And it's already done. So, uh, remember everyone today. Because you cannot leave a part of God. You cannot leave your brother outside of your love. And know the love's meaning. Okay? And know yourself. So, bless everyone. Whoever you see, um, tell him, I bless you with the love of God. With this love that we described, this is infinite, unlimited. The more you give it, the more you have, and the more the other have. This is the cure. The cure is the Holy Spirit inside your mind, the atonement of Christ, the healing of the mind. And um, learn the joyous lesson. The joyous lesson. The joyous lesson. You're going to be so full, son of God, that there is no love but God's. And yours, and everyone's, and mine, there is no love but this. And this is heaven. Say it everywhere. Peace. Hello, son of God and my brother. This is uh, your awakening. And uh, uh, it's about time to get up from this hall of illusions that you are trapped, that you are hostage to the ego. To get out by, by, from this world that is outside your mind. It's time for an awakening. And uh, this is uh, how you become uh, indestructible, invulnerable, immortal. It's the realization of uh, this lesson, which of course you have to recognize, or if you attend my lessons, you, you have to recognize that. Um, Guilt is hell, right? And um, the ego uh, without guilt has no life, okay? And uh, the Son of God is guiltless, okay? So, the ultimate purpose of projection is always, is always to get rid from, from, of guilt. Yet, characteristically, the ego attempts to get rid of guilt from uh, from its viewpoint only, for uh, much as the ego wants to retain guilt, you find it intolerable, since guilt stands in the way of you and your remembering of God. Okay, whose pull to you is so strong that uh, you cannot resist it. And uh, right here happens the uh, cures, the biggest split. Uh, the, the deepest split for uh, if, if you are to retain uh, guilt as they go in this if you are to retain guilt as they go in this you cannot be you you cannot be you son of God you cannot be you in the madness of they go and only by persuading you that it is you could they go possibly Induce you to project guilt and thereby to keep it in your mind. You have to get out of that trap. Yet consider, consider how strange is, how strange a solution this is. You know, uh, you, you project guilt to get rid of it, but you are actually concealing it. You do experience the guilt, but you have no idea where it's coming from. On the contrary, you associate it with uh, weird assessments of ego ideals, which the ego claims you, you, you have failed. And um, yet, you have no idea that you're failing the Son of God. You're failing. You, you are failing the, the Son of God because you, see him, because you see Him as guilty. 
believing you are no longer you, you do not realize you're failing yourself. The darkest of your hidden corner stores holds your belief and guilt from your awareness. In the darkest corner store of the ego, there is the belief of guilt. For in that dark and secret place is the realization that you have betrayed God's son by condemning him to death. Okay. You do not even suspect this murderous but insane idea lies hidden back there. For the eagle's destructive earth is so intense that nothing short of the crucifixion of God's son can, can ultimately satisfy it. It, it. it does not know who the son of God is because it is blind and um, if, it's, if it perceives guiltlessness anywhere it's, it's um, it, it will try to, to attack it, to destroy it because it is afraid it is afraid of the guiltlessness and um, much of the ego much of the ego's strange behavior is directly attributable attributable to the definition of guilt, to its definition of guilt, okay? To the ego, the guiltless are guilty, okay? Those who do not attack are its enemies, are its enemies be because they are not valuing the interpretation of the ego of salvation, so they can easily let it go. So the ego is afraid of them. Why? Because they approach the darkest and deepest cornerstone in the ego's foundation. And while they go, can manipulate you to question everything. It never haunts you to look there. It guards this one secret with its life, for its existence depends on that. Its existence depends on keeping this secret. But um, um, we have to look at this secret because um, the ego cannot protect it, cannot protect you against truth. Okay, and. Um, in the presence of truth, the ego is getting dispelled. So be still, and uh, in a calm light of truth, let us recognize that um, you believe you have crucified God's Son. Okay, that's what you believe right now. That's your belief in death. Okay, that's how where the guilt is coming from. You have not admitted to this terrible uh, secret. Because you, you would still wish to crucify him if you could find him. Yet the wish has hidden him from your from your awareness because it is very fearful and uh, um, you're afraid to find him. You've handled this wish to kill yourself by not knowing who you are and identifying with something else. That's the ego. You have projected guilt blindly and indiscriminately but you, you, you have not uncovered its source what is this where it's coming from for if, for the ego does want to kill you it only wants to kill you and if you identify with it you, you must believe the goal its goal is yours okay i've said that crucifixion is the symbol of the ego when when it was confronted with um, the real guiltlessness of God's son, it did attempt to kill him. And uh, the reason it gave uh, was that the guiltlessness is blasphemous to God. <laughs> to the ego, the ego is God. And guiltlessness must be interpreted as a final guilt that fully justifies murder. Only your guiltlessness will protect you. Only your guiltlessness will protect you. Healing is coming from the Holy Spirit to the root cause of the problem which is in your mind. Without guilt, the ego has no life. And God's Son is without guilt. Your true self is without guilt. You have to awaken, get out of the bondage of the ego. The Holy Spirit stands at the end of time where you must be because he's with you. He has already done everything unworthy of the Son of God 
for such was the mission, such was his mission given him by God. And what God gives has always been. You are invulnerable because you are guiltless. You might be questioning now, how can I be guiltless? You're not guiltless in time, you're guiltless now. You're guiltless in the eternity. You're guiltless when you play your true self, son of God. Not when you are prisoner to the ego, not when you are to bondage, bondage by the ego. Okay. So you are invulnerable because you are guiltless. You can hold on to the past only through guilt. For guilt establishes that you will be punished for what you have done and thus depends on one dimensional time proceeding from the past to future. Okay. From past to future. No one who believes this can understand what always means the now, the eternal, and therefore guilt must deprive you of the appreciation of eternity. Hell is guilt. When you are free of guilt, you don't die here. You are immortal because you are eternal. And always, always is now, must be now. Guilt then is a way of the ego's continuity, okay? It's a way of holding the past and future in your mind to ensure that ego's continuity. But you have to remind yourself the guarantee of your continuity is of God's, not the ego's. Okay. And immortality is uh, the opposite of time. For time passes away, while immortality is constant. This is your awakening, sounds good. Peace!